My name is Melissa Odin, and I am the result of an unsuccessful abortion. In 1977, my biological mother, a 19-year-old college student, had a saline infusion abortion forced upon her by her mother with the help of a local abortionist. For five days in my mother's womb, I soaked in a toxic salt solution intended to poison and scald me to death. When I was delivered in bed by a nurse that fifth day, I was believed to be dead. Weighing a little over two pounds, suffering from jaundice and severe respiratory distress, my arrival into this world was not so much as a birth, but an accident, a live birth after a failed abortion. So if I am an unsuccessful abortion, what does a successful abortion mean? Life is the foundation of all other rights. I was almost denied that most basic right from the beginning of my existence. Those who oppose protections for preborn children speak ambiguously about when life begins and what abortion actually does. But the reality is much clearer. Simply put, I am here today because of a failed abortion. Had it been successful, I would not be here. Isn't there something wrong when one person's decision results in another person's death? Policies in our country should be life-affirming, not life-ending. Our government needs to protect the rights of states to make laws that protect lives like mine, laws that protect the fundamental right to life enshrined in the Bill of Rights. Abortion doesn't just impact a woman's life, it ends a child's life. Somehow along the way, the narrative for abortion survivors got flipped. Our births are accidental, unintended. Our fundamental right to life was nearly taken from us, but my very existence today proves the humanity of living persons in the womb. If we have protection now, we deserve protection then, when we're at our most vulnerable.